Hi, we're going to work with uh, Matthew Wong this week, who was just an amazing um, painter that we lost too soon. Um, he passed away a few years ago at 35. Um, I wanted to show the scale of some of his paintings. It's hard to tell, but he, he did these really epic, emotive, hyper-personal and symbolic um, works with a lot of great references to art history. So um, what makes the Matthew Wong painting that we can look at? So. He um, dealt a lot with, showed nature off in trees and patterns in water and patterns in the grass. Um, you know, he had a lot of scenes outdoors, paths going through scenes, mountains, really magical, um, you know, an abstracted version of what we see out in the wild. And through those often were these paths um, that were, you know, symbolic to moving forward. Um, sometimes they went somewhere and sometimes they... Like in this one, they just end before they reach the mountain. Um, and we've learned in previous landscape you know, classes, it's a good way to create depth. Um, often these landscapes and scenes of nature have like a solitary figure in them, which to me makes them feel so lonely, um, so kind of just sad and melancholy. And it's really powerful to see that lone image in these giant landscapes and later we'll learn that he was influenced by Chinese landscapes and um, ancient landscapes and you can see that often there was like a lone figure. Um, he used really distinct and repetitive really emotive marks um, like this so it might be some of you might be really inspired to try this kind of mark making which really reminds me of Van Gogh's mark making. Um, some of you might be inspired to do the path or the nature or the lone figure. Um, it's kind of what this class is about each week to kind of just, you know, kick you into some area. Um, he always did, I love this, small bits of high contrast, whether it's value or color. So like a pop of red in this sea of dark. One pop of yellow, one pop of red in this sea of blue. Again, a pop of yellow and red really contrasts this little on the right bottom part, the little yellow. Um, and it makes it really distinct. That was one of a huge part. And he had these great color themes that we can, we're going to look at tomorrow. We're going to go deep on color tomorrow. Um, analogous colors, which is when you look at the color wheel, it's three colors next to each other on the color wheel. So orange, um, yellow, orange, and yellow, like in this one of Wong's paintings, you could use that palette. And these are just naturally harmonious. Um, yellow, yellow, green, and green. Those are, your eyes find that appealing. So this is an example of that, of a Wong painting. Um, monochromatic is when you mix one color with white, gray, and black. So in this case, this is from his like blue period. Um, he used this is all just blue, gray, um, black, and white. I mean, there's little bits of obviously purple and, and a little bit of yellow in this one, but mainly it's monochromatic um, color themes. This I think is kind of a green, a green monochromatic, blue green. I love this one. So maybe some of you are going to be inspired to use a palette similar similar to his. Complementary colors, and that's any color that's on the opposite of the color wheel, like red and green, which again, Van Gogh used these a lot. He was he must have been really inspired by Van Gogh because um, he used the same palette, and that was because they vibrate. Like we talked about last time, here's, here's complementary blue and orange, and it just literally vibrates, so that's why it's so dynamic. Um, this one, we see again all these elements, repetitive strokes, nature, the solitary figure, this is a take on the famous wave painting by Hokusuka. Um, and just the dynamic palette, you could do that, or you could use all the colors. He did that beautifully, too. Yeah, so this is just a stunning kind of way he is so playful with everything going on. And I think that a lot of you already do that naturally. But it's kind of like combined. It creates this, like, pattern on the, on the canvas. It's really cool. Um, but I find that really inspiring. So some of his influences, I'm just going to mention because you can see how kind of cool this is. Bill Jensen was like a abstract expressionist. So for those of you who'd rather do abstract painting but don't see how you could be inspired by Matthew Wong to do that, you see here a lot of the playfulness with color. It's maybe not so blatant, but I think like this one especially, you can see a lot of it. So those of you that want to do abstract, you really could just look at his work and look at some of the color combinations to go from there. Um, Chinese landscape painting, you can see here obviously the layout of the solitaire fig figure surrounded by nature, uh, monochromatic palettes, these like looming um, 
bits of rock. I see so much of this in, in Matthew Wong's work. Um, so maybe these will inspire you also. Uh, and also he was really inspired by Picasso's blue period, which a lot of those monochromatic ones are very similar palette to these. Um, really, really similar palettes to a lot of them actually. Um, and a lot of contemporary artists do that. They are inspired. And then this Clint looks just like one of his paintings and he found this particular painting really inspiring. Um, so what can you paint? Um, I'm just going to show you some images I pulled out that I was looking at and why. Like this is of August hiking. I feel like there's the path, the nature, the lone figure. Could do some great marks. Again, the lone figure with lots of nature, all sorts of reference to waves, um, a couple of trees, um, and then again a path in the water this time and I could do tons of patterns in the cloud and the water. Um, this is my mom during a tornado, long, you know, lone solitary figure. So I think play around. It doesn't have to be literal to what he did, but I think you'll be inspired. Okay, see you tomorrow.